Hi, I am Duel Links Entertainment Kamal, and welcome to the Duel Links Entertainment YouTube channel. Today, I'm bringing you more of a tutorial style video. Uh, this is something that I think is very important for people in the Duel Links, <clears throat> uh, the Duel Links community to understand, and it is an important part of community building, and that is how to create a tournament on Smash GG. So, Smash GG is one of the more uh, well-known tournament hosting sites you can make an event of any size host it do whatever you have to do people can pay sign up you can host very large events we host all of our events on smash gg and that is because of the wide array of features that are at our disposal as tournament moderators so smash gg can be a daunting task for some people to sign up on at first because they're not used to using an external site to play their mobile game competitively so i'm going to make a tutorial for this so because uh, a lot of our players want to know how to use it correctly so we are going to organize an event create a tournament so i'm going to create the link for battle phase fridays battle phase fridays number 44 because that is the next battle phase i'm going to make a discord link put in all of my information here there we go the start date for battle phase will always be 4 p.m est unless stated otherwise so here you will state the start time of your tournament and the end date doesn't really matter as long as it ends uh, once you know your tournament will be over all right so now that we've set the time for our event, we have to do a couple things, right? Smash does a good job at laying out for you what you have to do. You have to firstly create an event. So an event is what players will sign up for when they join your tournament. They have to sign up for the event, which is the first stage of your tournament. So for event, you have to select your game. You can get your Duel Links is on the list. You can type it in. Check mobile, check PC. So people can play on both. We're going to do 1v1. Select it. That is an, it is an online event. Now for deck deadline behavior and deck upload method, you want people to upload a deck, a screenshot from their computer or smartphone. And then for deck deadline behavior, you want to remove entrant from bracket. This is very important and it is so that once your tournament or event time comes around, any player that has not submitted a deck will be removed from the bracket. So you won't have people match up against people that are not there because they didn't submit a deck. So we're going to also set our event start time for 4 p.m. because we want the tournament and the event to start at the same time. Now, player cap, this is usually up to you, but however, since uh, Duel Links Entertainment hosts Battle Phase and it is a five round tournament into top 32, in order to guarantee that every player with four wins makes the top cut, our tournament cap is 172. You can modify your player cap to meet whatever needs you need. Uh, a good way to find out how many you need for a certain cut to make it is by using a, a, a top cut tournament calculator. Uh, there's a lot of them online. You can use them. But 172 is what works for us being five rounds so you can put a description in your event here but there's nothing really for us to describe since you're only going to be signing up for this anyway okay good now we have to add a bunch of settings to our event so we're going to click edit delete and these are the things that we just plugged in and now we're going to have to go over to registration and we are going to fill in everywhere that requires us to note a time when the event starts and we are going to set it to the same 4 p.m that we know our tournament and our first event will be starting at so all right so i actually made a mistake here event registration start date so event registration start date will be today since uh, this is when i'm making the link and the event registration end date will be 4 p.m on the day of the tournament okay next we have to scroll back up and go to deadlines now deadlines are when your deck must be submitted now it automatically grabs it from the event start time which is good you just always want to make sure that these 
times are all the same. If it comes down to it and you have conflicting times, you will notice something is wrong on your bracket. So we go back to our dashboard here at the top and we're going to uh, edit everywhere where it says we need to edit. So next, we're going to go to our registration and add registration end date. We are just going to plug in that same Friday at 4 p.m. like we did before. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then you are the last thing you're going to do is you're going to add a description to the front of your tournament, right? This is where you would usually post a huge blurb about um, the start time, the prize, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I, what, what uh, we do at Daily is we save the blurbs from week to week and we just edit them where we need to and plug them in. So if I take this one, Battle Phase Monday, boom, plug it in here. Now all I got to change is a couple things. Tell them it's Friday. It'll be number 44. It'll be March 27th. Oop, not 73rd. 27th. And that is on a Friday. So yeah, everything about this is the same because we always use the same rule sets and format for our tournaments. This is just information considering the ban list that is in effect right now. So we are going to save that. Go back to settings, hit up our dashboard. And now our tournament is ready to begin. When I want to let it so make it so people can sign up for the tournament, I can hit publish on all of these things. And yeah, then people are allowed to sign up. Now uh, I'm going to let you take a sneak peek at a battle phase that I am currently working on that is that is live right now on Twitch. So let's cut to that. And okay, we're back. So here I have a battle phase bracket setup that is live going on right now. The tournament is live on Twitch and the, it, we had a full tournament today. So what we're looking at here is the bracket setup. This will be located right under events. And when you make your event and you want to set the format, you will go to bracket setup. So the first thing about bracket setup is that when you have a two stage tournament like ours, which is five rounds of Swiss in two eight top 32, you want to make two phases. See right here where it says add phase, all you're gonna do you're going to have one phase which shows up, then add your second phase and make it the top cut. So for a Swiss phase in your tournament, uh, there are a couple important things that you have to note, right? So the number of rounds which you would like to have vary upon amongst whatever time constraints you want to have uh, reach however many players you want to have so we do five rounds so that we can have 172 players in the tournament so we have five rounds and then these things should be standard right points per match win you get one point when you beat someone in a best of three match uh when you get a buy which means there was an odd number of players in the in the bracket and you didn't have an opponent you also get one point because we don't want to punish you because the bracket sorted you against someone else in the unlikely event of a tie you will get 0.5 points because the match did not result in anyone winning and per individual game win you get zero points this is set this way so that there is not a difference between someone who goes 2-0 in a match and someone who goes 2-1. You're still going to have the same score based on how many games it took you to get the win. All that matters is the win. So probably the most important part of running a Swiss tournament is to make sure your rules are aligned correctly. I can't tell you how many tournaments that I have moderated for people or set up and they don't have the correct rules on. So when you first make your bracket set up for a Swiss tournament, I will show you what it is. Um, gives you as one option. So if we switch this to Swiss, so right here we can see tiebreaker rules, total sets one, and then game win percentage and head to head. You do not want game win percentage and head or head to head 
on your rule set. What this does is it takes other factors into account, such as how many games you won total across the entire tournament, and it takes it adds those factors when calculating the top thirty, the top sixteen players of each pool. So those rules we do not want them. So let's go over to our active battle phase. The only active rules we do want are total sets one and opponent set win percentage. You will find opponent set win percentage in the drop down list of rules, which we already, yeah, opponent set win percentage, we already have it here. So you don't have to add, enter any numbers into here. These are just for specifics. What opponent set win percentage does is it takes the strength of your your bracket, right? The strength of the opponents that you went up against, and it settles the tiebreakers that way, right? So if there, if there are two people who went three and two, the person who lost to opponents that went on to go undefeated in the tournament, right? If their two losses were to two people who went five and zero oh in the tournament, they will place higher than a three and two who lost two game, who lost two matches. And the people that he lost those two matches to, they also went like two or three or three and two. They didn't do very well. So your tiebreaker will be lower than this person's tiebreaker who only lost to undefeated players. So that is how ties are settled in the Swiss format. You may not think this is very fair, but in a very large event where a lot of people will have the same score, it is important that you try your hardest to win at the very early rounds to avoid you having a very poor tiebreaker. In most events, if you go uh, three and two or whatever is right below the guaranteed uh, top ratio, usually like f going four and one, only losing one match, you will be at the mercy of your tiebreaker. So you will always have to make sure that it is good enough for you to top if your score overall is not high enough this is probably the most important part of your settings in your tournament it must have opponent set win percentage for a dual links competitive event so yeah so after your rules are set up the next thing you want to do is select your pools you will need pools in your tournament depending on the amount of players that you have battle phase is a two pool tournament because we have 172 total participants and that div divvies up to about 78 or 79 per pool. If we had it all in one pool, it would be absolute chaos, and the bracket would probably crash. So next we have our entrance. It adds them to either pool evenly, so that does not matter. And then we have our progression. So you can select your progression when you create a second phase of your tournament. So here we have the top 32. And what adding the top 32 does, it allows us to select the destination phase and the amount of players that will go from each pool to the next phase. So we have a top 32 single elimination phase. So we will select 16 players from each pool because we have two pools. That is how we will get our 32 players. So you can see that um, the entrance joining for the top 32 will be the top 16 players of each pool as per this drop down menu here. That's what that says. And so that is your bracket setup. That is all you need to know how to do. Next, um, when your tournament is progressing and you need to moderate it, of course, because people will have disputes, people will have questions during your tournament, you'll have to DQ people that drop all of these things that you may not want to do, but you have to do. You will go to the bracket. And this is a full breakdown of what is going on in your bracket. If you scroll over an individual player, you can go into their match, look at their chat, and you can solve a dispute. You can change the score, reset the match, everything you need to do. You see a lot of these matches are already concluded. That's because the round is almost over. And let's say that you have to drop a player that was disqualified, right? Uh, this person did not show up for the tournament even though they submitted their deck list they were on the bracket so to avoid them being in any further rounds because they are truly not here i'm going to click here on edit and i'm going to go over to their name here and i'm going to click this red thing this is drop player 
and I'm going to drop him out of the event because he was not here at the beginning. So he's not going to be here for the ensuing rounds to play his matches. And it's important to always clear out your DQs at the end of every round, before the end of every round, so that they don't match up against someone else in the next round who is actually trying to play and win. If someone goes up against a DQ player and they get a DQ win, that will negatively affect their tiebreaker uh, because they didn't play the duel. And it's not really their fault. It's kind of your, it's all on you because you didn't get them out of the tournament, so they took up someone's spot. So that is just about the gist of running a tournament. Also, you have to go to edit round settings this is another important thing. Smash GG requires you to add round timers. So 60 minute rounds beginning at the start of your tournament. That's a good, easy time limit for Duel Links. You don't want to set harsh timers on people in Duel Links because sometimes uh, slow decks take long times you're playing a best of three if a slow if a slow deck is playing three duels you don't know how long that can take the other setting you want to go to here is timers so a dq timer is how much time someone is allowed at the beginning of each round before they check in to their match you don't want to hold up the bracket so everyone has 10 minutes from the start of the round to in the round to get ready for their duel. If they are not there for their duel, then they will be disqualified. And most most of the time, when you get disqualified, you get dropped, so you don't ruin anyone else's chances of playing an actual opponent. Verify timers are for when you have to report a score in your match after you win or lose a game. And that is, yeah, that is about it to moderating your Duel Links tournament. Um, a couple other things to mention, if you want to send a message to all, yes, if you want to send a message to all active sets, to all active matches, this is a very useful feature if there is a bug or something happens in your tournament that everyone needs to know about, this will make it so whatever you type here will show up in your it will show up in their match chat. So after all this, if you are a tournament mod, just make sure you survey your brackets so that people's disputes get answered correctly. And then before you know it, you have a successful weekly tournament on your hands like Battle Phase is live right now. Shout out to the boy Rai for streaming Battle Phase. And uh, you got people like me behind the scenes moderating it. So. Thank you for tuning in to this Smash GG uh, guide. We'll hope that you will make your own Duel Links tournament. Ask me any questions in the comment section. I would be happy to answer them. And yeah, check out us at Duel Links Entertainment. This is our Twitch channel here. So come out to the tournaments. Hit up our Discord, Twitter, and uh, like our separate post when you see us in Reddit. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you for coming today and peace out.